In this video, we are going to construct the confidence interval for difference of means based on large samples and small samples. Right? See, the problem is to find the confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2. What may be the appropriate statistic? You consider expectation of x1 bar minus x2 bar. What will you get? Expectation of x1 bar minus expectation of x2 bar which is mu1 minus mu2. What will be variance of x1 bar minus x2 bar when the samples are independent? You have variance of x1 bar plus variance of x2 bar. Right? Minus 1 will become variance of Ax is A square into variance of x. And the covariance term will not be there because where the samples are independent. So you have sigma 1 square plus sigma, sorry, sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2. Because it is not x, it is x1 bar. Sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2. Okay, right. So if a statistic t, if you have a statistic t and when the sample size is large, you know t minus expectation of t divided by square root of variance of t follows standard normal distribution. Right? So, on the same logic, you know that x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2, its expected value divided by square root of sigma1 square by n1 plus sigma2 square by n2 follows standard normal distribution. That is normal 0, 1. This is the standard normal variate. So this is the clue. This is where you are going to start the process of deriving the confidence interval when the sample size is large. Okay. You have two samples. When both the samples are of large size, you are going to make use of this particular clue. And when the sample sizes are small, you know x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2 population standard deviation is also unknown and the sample sizes are small but the samples are independent in this case this statistic follows t distribution with n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom you are going to start with this point okay so now we are very clear about where to start now you know that the statistic follows is a distribution so since is a standard normal distribution is symmetric probability of minus z alpha by 2 to plus z alpha by 2 is 1 minus alpha right you remember this idea see alpha by 2 alpha by 2 the remaining area is 1 minus alpha you identify this value as z alpha by 2 and this is minus z alpha by 2 so the probability that your z lies between these two values is 1 minus alpha okay so probability of minus z alpha by 2 x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2 divided by square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 less than z alpha by 2 is 1 minus alpha probability of you cross multiply minus z alpha by 2 square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 less than x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2 less than z alpha by 2 into square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 is equal to 1 minus alpha probability of minus x1 bar minus x2 bar minus z alpha by 2 into square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 less than minus mu1 minus mu2 less than minus x1 bar minus x2 bar plus z alpha by 2 square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 is equal to 1 minus alpha. Probability of multiply the entire inequality by minus 1 x1 bar minus x2 bar plus z alpha by 2 square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 
greater than mu1 minus mu2 greater than you are multiplying everything by minus 1 so the direction of the inequality changes this becomes plus and this term becomes negative this equal to 1 minus alpha just reverse the inequality for your convenience so that you get the lower limit first x1 bar minus x2 bar minus z alpha by 2 square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 less than mu1 minus mu2 less than x1 bar minus x2 bar plus z alpha by 2 square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 equal to 1 minus alpha. So if the confidence level is 1 minus alpha, what is the confidence interval? x1 bar minus x2 bar minus z alpha by 2 into square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 comma x1 bar minus x2 bar plus z alpha by 2 into square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 okay so this is the way you can construct the confidence interval uh, with level 1 minus alpha see the condition is the sample should be independent and the sample sizes should be large only then you can you make use of this procedure to find the confidence interval now what happens when the sample sizes are small and when the population variances are unknown you are going to make use of this statistic okay so you have probability of minus t alpha by 2 less than t less than t alpha by 2 is equal to 1 minus alpha what is t the statistic which is to which has to be considered here is this because your purpose is to find the confidence interval for difference of means so you should you consider the statistic which has the term mu1 minus mu2 in it so you are going for this choice okay so multiply minus t alpha by 2 into square s into square root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 less than x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2 is less than t alpha by 2 into s into square root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 is equal to 1 minus alpha probability of minus x1 bar minus x2 bar minus t alpha by 2 s into square root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 less than negative value of mu1 minus mu2 less than minus x1 bar minus x2 bar plus t alpha by 2 s into square root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 so first you multiply by minus 1 so that you get x1 bar minus x2 bar plus t alpha by 2 s into square root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 less than mu1 sorry it is not less than you have multiplied by minus 1 so you have greater than greater than x1 bar minus x2 bar minus t alpha by 2 s into square root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 is equal to 1 minus alpha so when you reverse the inequality this becomes the lower limit and this is even now this is the upper limit and this is the lower limit for easy understanding just reverse the inequality probability of x1 bar minus x2 bar minus t alpha by 2 into s by s into square root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 less than mu1 minus mu2 less than x1 bar minus x2 bar plus t alpha by 2 into s into square root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 is 1 minus alpha. So what you have the confidence interval for difference of means based on small samples which are independent. See how many how much conditions are there. The sample sizes should be small and the sample should be independent. In that case to find the confidence interval for difference of means you can make use of this formula okay so the confidence interval for difference of means based on large sample and this is the confidence interval for difference of means based on 
small sample small samples small again in both the cases the sample should be independent okay thank you